You've likely heard quite a lot about PCIe Gen 4 in the last couple of days. A bit about how it's amazing and brilliant and great to see on AMD motherboards, and also how it's basically completely pointless. Now while I do generally agree with both of those statements, there is one caveat, at least to the second one, and that is SSDs. Specifically PCIe Gen 4 SSDs, like this one from Aorus, it is an incredible drive, and we're going to talk about it here. So some headline stats, it can read at over 5 gigabytes per second, and write about 4.2. You get a massive 70 gram chunk of copper as a heatsink in the box, and it uses a Fizen E16 controller, which is basically the only PCIe PCIe Gen 4 controller that's available right now, uh, and it's also relatively expensive since it's pretty new, and also the model I have is the 2TB one, and it's coming in at around about $500. On the note of price, while it is definitely an expensive drive, around about $500 for the 2TB model, it's actually not all that much more expensive than existing M.2 2TB drives like Samsung's 970 EVO, although it's the double the speed, which is just incredible. Also bear in mind that the one one terabyte and the soon to be released 500 gig models will also be a good bit cheaper too. So performance, this thing is insane. In the synthetic tests that I usually run, ASSSD, ATTO, and Crystal Disk Mark, you can see that they are, it just absolutely smashes it. We're looking at a little over 5 gigabytes per second in writes at peak, with around about 4.2 gigabytes per second in writes, which is just incredible. Even on lower Q depths, like at ATTO with a Q depth of 4, we're still looking at 4.7 gigabytes per second in reads, anything over about 256 kilobytes. In my usual real world test, which is actually just more like a torture test for the drive, I copy GTA 5's game files onto the drive and then duplicate them to really stress both the reads and the writes and really get the best out of the controller possible. With that said, my usual test result for this for a good NVMe drive is around about 1 gigabyte per second. This drive is about 50% faster, uh, easily sitting at 1.5 gigabytes per second for almost the entire duration of the copy. Now that's pretty rare. Most drives end up tapering off performance because their buffers and caches fill up. This drive seems to do a very good job of keeping its cache empty. It has a two gigabyte DDR4 cache, and I'm not too sure about buffer, but it seems to do a pretty good job. It also seems to do a good job of keeping itself cool. Well, that is definitely down to the massive 70 grams of copper that is strapped to it, it didn't reach the 70 degrees thermal throttling point that some drives do. It did get a little bit close after multiple stress tests at around about 67 degrees Celsius, but it never thermal throttled, and so that's definitely good in my book. I would mention that if you have a, an already hot PC case and you're writing a lot to the drive, it may thermal throttle, so do bear that in mind and make sure you have good airflow on it to keep it nice and cool. And in case anyone was worried about being able to fill the drive in about seven minutes at peak writes and you know wear out the drive immediately, uh, Gigabyte has listed 3.6 petabytes written as their warranty limit, so you should be pretty good there. Overall then, PCIe Gen 4 from a graphics card perspective is a bit of a marketing gimmick, and one that can actually hurt your wallet if you're planning on picking up an X570 motherboard. But from an SSD perspective, this is an incredible performance, and actually in theory this isn't even the maximum performance you can get from the connection, it should be more like 6GB per second in reads, so definitely interesting to see, but whether you actually need that performance, or even the performance that this drive already offers, is definitely a, a different question. So would I put one of these in my rig? Well, I'd have to have a Ryzen 3000 series processor and a X570 motherboard, so currently that would rule me out from having this, but if I did have that, it's certainly an interesting shout. I think the answer is a bit of a maybe. While it's definitely an awesome drive and incredible to see this level of performance, I already don't really make use of the one terabyte WD Black drive that's in my PC right now that can do about three gigabytes per second on reads and about 2.7 on writes, so if I don't really use that, then I don't quite know why I would need this, and so unless you really have a use case for it, I think that it's a very nice technology technology, but almost a bit too ahead of the curve. With that said, those are my thoughts and I would love to hear yours in the comments down below. Is this a drive you're really interested in picking up? If you have a use case for it, what is that? I would love to hear that in the comments down below. And of course, if you do want to pick it up or check out pricing when and where you watch this, do bear in mind that this drive has only just launched and so if you're watching this video when it goes up or within the first few weeks, it might not be available anywhere yet, so do keep that in mind. But I will leave a link in the description down below that will take you to your local Amazon store 
before and hopefully you'll be able to see pricing when and where you watch this. You can also check out the rest of the links in the description down below if you want to support the channel. There's Amazon and Overclosure Kit affiliate links which don't cost you anything to use but whether you're buying brand new SSDs or garden sheds on Amazon it all massively helps me out and so thank you to everyone who does use those. If you're not subscribed make sure you hit that subscribe button with a bell notification icon to get more videos every Monday, Wednesday and Friday and you can check out the rest of the links from hoodies and t-shirts like this one or a load of other designs including non technology related ones and you can also check out the Patreon link if you want to support me directly and get cool rewards for doing so or private internet access which is a great and cheap VPN or Humble Bundle for cheap games that support charities too. Otherwise there's plenty of other videos over there if you've not watched my Ryzen 3900 and 3700X uh, videos uh, then you can check that out. Also uh, plenty of motherboard reviews for X570 are coming up so do make sure you're subscribed for those and otherwise that is pretty much it. If you enjoyed the video let me know in the comments down below and obviously leave a like and we'll see you all in the next video.